Hello. So I just got done with my exams. These were my sessional exams and the issue with these exams were that it was right after my elective and during my elective I only did my elective stuff and I roamed around France so I didn't end up studying for these and after coming back I felt like I felt sick for a period of two weeks which was the time I could prepare so I basically could not study a lot for these exams and with USMLE and everything happening in the first half of the year I was kind of doomed for these exams. Regardless, with whatever time I did have, I tried to be as efficient as possible while learning and while writing these answers. And while doing that, I came across a few patterns that I have been using consistently for clinical subjects that I would like to highlight right now, which might make your reading more conceptual and easier for you to write answers in exams. So this video is all about that and uh, hopefully I pass. Um, I I'm hoping I will. I think it was decent enough to pass. So let's start with how a basic clinical subject progresses. So there's etiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, investigations and management. And I have come up with a way from obviously a lot of help from the internet, some mnemonics, some sources and also my brain to kind of remember these and understand them quicker so that I can reproduce them well in the paper. Most importantly for this to work, you need to be very conscious while studying and very conscious during the paper. So sleeping for two hours before the paper or not eating food before the paper is not going to work. So I made sure I slept seven hours even though I had tons of syllabus left and ate food because when I was awake during the paper, I was able to think and reproduce these kind of answers. With etiology and pathogenesis, whenever you read a topic, what I did was uh, I'd read the pathogenesis completely and then I would open my voice notes or I'd open my camera and I would explain it to myself so that the concept is clear in my head. Now this concept is obviously going to help you write answers also but it's also going to help you build a base for the rest of the clinical features investigations and management. And for etiology um, or differential diagnosis I basically go with the simple, the midnight formula. I'm sure you've seen it all around the internet where you think of differential diagnosis in terms of metabolic causes, inflammatory causes, infectious causes, neoplasms, um, am I missing something? Infiltrative, genetic, chromosome. I mean, basically goes in this order. If I find a link to that mnemonic, I'm going to put it down in this video. But yeah. I think of those differentials and I'm at least able to come up with uh, five, six differentials and you don't really need to come up with any more than that. And for you to come up with these differentials, you're supposed to know the pathogenesis of almost everything that you're reading really well. When I say know it, I don't mean that you vomit it in the exam. Know it in the sense when someone asks you what it is, when someone asks you what it is, you're able to explain it to them in simple terms. That's how you can gauge that if you understood a concept or not. This is for etiopathogenesis and differential diagnosis. Coming to clinical features. So when I do clinical features, I always think of it as history taking when you're talking to a patient. Um, I think I noticed this while I was studying for acute appendicitis and I was looking at the clinical features then I realized you go in a pattern. What is the most basic thing when you think of acute appendicitis? You think of pain. So when you're taking history in the hospital, you divide pain into multiple sections that is uh, duration, type, radiating, everything. So all you have to do is think if this condition can cause all of this. What kind of pain can it cause? Does this pain migrate or radiate? And yes, it does. And this is why it's important to read bigger books because it helps you think easily. Now, why will appendicitis cause nausea and vomiting? That I understood only after reading Bailey's. So after coming up with the basic chief complaint, I'm able to elaborate more on the associated complaints. And now you also have to ask the patients if they have any complications. So you start directing your questions towards complications. And for each condition, it's kind of easy to figure out complications. In case there's an appendiceal abscess, when you ask for fever, you ask for stuff like this. And once you're done with the history taking part of it, you move on to examination. So now history taking covers your symptoms and your examination covers the signs. And when you're doing examination, appendicitis is something that's involved in the abdomen. So I will do general physical examination and I will do abdominal examination. General physical examination, I'm going to think of vitals, 
I'm going to think of the general state of the person. When I think of acu acute appendicitis, I know that this person might be having fever, this person might be having raised heart rate, etc. So I'm able to write those in the signs. Following this, you have such, some specific signs that you might have to remember extra. Here, your memory power starts working. Like this rose ring sign, psoas test, obturator test, all these things are different signs that are specific for appendicitis. But the thing is, when you're in a situation like I was in, where I did not have enough time, even writing the basic signs and symptoms that you know without the specific ones will garner you some amount of marks and you'll feel good that you've used your brain in the exam. That's it. After finishing signs and symptoms, I move on to investigations. So <clears throat> investigations is very simple. You think of the gold standard. Gold standard is the only one that you have to remember. And then you remember the investigation of choice. Now gold standard is the thing that very specifically tells you that this is the disease. Investigation of choice is the one that is most likely to be done because it's probably more accessible, less expensive and with lesser resources, it tells you what the diagnosis is. I divide it in my brain into two things. Number one is the actual investigations to find out what this disease is. And obviously those basic ones like CBC, MRI, but don't write them for all answers. Don't write CBC, CT, MRI for all answers because sometimes they're gonna be like, this person knows nothing. So start with the specific investigations. And if you feel like you've written less, end me like, you know, CBC, CT, MRI, it works for everything. And, um, you should know the components of these investigations so you can mention what you're actually going to find in it. And be the pathogenesis and clinical features are important because if you don't know that, how will you know what you're going to find through these investigations? And most importantly, learn what these investigations are. Learn why an ultrasound is done. How is it done? How is it going to tell you? Like up until a few days back, it was so hard for me to visualize why an ultrasound produces a certain kind of image. Then I thought about it. I thought about how the sound waves are probably hitting each structure and that's why the image is produced kind of perpendicular to where you put the probe. So all I'm saying is try to understand what each investigation does. It's going to be beneficial for you to write. So as I said, number one, I divide the investigations into one thing that will help you find out what the diagnosis is. And second thing is investigations to rule out complications and other differential diagnosis. You already found out your differential diagnosis from the first mnemonic. Now you can think of all these investigations that can help you rule out these differentials. So this way your answer is kind of very, very complete without you putting too much effort into memorizing these things. And finally, management. See, with management, uh, I think almost every medical student does this. You start with, uh, you start with resuscitation, maintain airway, breathing, circulation, all of that, fine, you do that. And then you think of all the other symptoms, if there's fever, antipyretics, pain, analgesia, etc. But these are all your general management. They won't give you complete marks for just writing these. So management, I feel, is the only one that you will end up having to learn and memorize. Uh, but if management is the only thing that you have to learn and memorize, then it makes a lot of things very, very, very easy. Management also, of course, learn the concept of the management, learn how it's done, watch the surgery, do whatever you want to understand what's going on. But for management, make sure you highlight a few important keywords. This is like CBSE board exams where you have keywords and people look for these keywords. So when you're writing your answer, also highlight these keywords with the highlighter if you have so in your exam. Uh, at least that's what I do because sometimes teachers don't have the patience to read through everything. And if they've seen that these specific scientific highlighted words are present in your answer, they will give you marks. So this was how I kind of got through the past one week of exams. I'm glad I got enough sleep though. And now I'm finally back, uh, having fun for these next two days. Uh, after which the grind starts again, studies, gym, and I don't know, hanging out with friends sometimes. So yeah, that was this video. It was a short and cute video. I hope you all liked it. And I will be coming up with a few vlogs. I did shoot a vlog, but then I was so like, Honestly, I looked so dead in that vlog, I didn't feel like posting it, so I haven't posted it. Uh, I will be coming up with either a vlog or a teaching video because it's been a while and I was a little underconfident in teaching, but now I feel like if I read the topic really well, I'll be able to teach you guys. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe.